All right, mate. Winter's coming again, isn't it, Jason? I know, yeah, I've got the hoodies on. Here we are. boiling last week. What's Middle of on? July. June. June. Anyway, this is Tea and Toast Extra. Coming up on today's episode, Greg, we're talking about five American things that confuse us British people. You've been to America, haven't you, Greg? Six times. I've been once. Oh, well. But obviously, uh, I've heard of a lot of other things in America through watching lots of American movies. American. American. Uh, there are certain things that our American friends do that really confuse us British people. Tipping. Oh, you mean like throwing rubbish away? No, I mean like Fly giving, tipping. giving money to people who offer services, oh. even though you paid for the service. We don't do that. I mean, I think that it, more and more people in this country are starting to tip. However, I think that our pay systems are very different. I think that American waiters and waitresses, for example, um, don't get paid as fairly as our waiters and waitresses get paid so they rely on making up their wages with tips and I think the American public know that and are happy with that and it's just a given thing that everybody tips after everything I think in America we don't do we and when I went to America it scared me to death I was what? Like, well, what do I tip do I tip how much do I tip do I give do you know what I mean it's like it's the it's like the old thing isn't it the guy who carries your bags into the hotel do you Give him a handshake with a few dollars in your hand. Say thanks very much as a tip. Or is that just like in the movies? I just get my own butler to do that. Of course you do, Greg. Um, so, Americans, what is the rule? How much do you tip? Is it 10%, 15%, 25%? Are you all completely happy with tipping? In this country, there are lots of people who don't leave tips at all. Or gratuities. I do. However. What did you say? Gratuities. It's the same as the tip. But why don't you say tip then? Same thing. I do think there are some... I think you're right. There are some places doing it now in the UK. Um, but I, I don't feel comfortable doing it. I tip if I get great service. If the service is mediocre, then I don't tip. Now, in more and more places in the UK, when you pay by card, it comes up on the screen that says, would you like to add a gratuity to this? Well, if the waitress has been rubbish, or the waiter has been rubbish, press no. If they've been great, then I'll press yes. So you're practically like Simon Cowell of the waitressing world. <laughs> <laughs> no tip for Very you. good, yeah, and the tea gets poured over you, yeah. or flemmed in. So, could you explain the American tipping system to us? Is it just a given thing that you tip, or do you tip for great service? Is it just great service over there? I know. So I'll tell you when we, I've noticed it over here. You know when they bring you, uh, you give a twenty pound note, and it's only fifteen, and they don't never bring five pound note over, do they? They bring it over in coins and leave it on a little tray. Yeah. That's when they expect you to leave a pound. That's our type type of tipping, isn't it? Yes, please? I think so. I think you're right. Greg. Thanks very much. I'd like to put my little two pence worth in. So that's the difference between my tip. That is, Jason. Tipping in America and tipping. In Great Britain. Tipping is also throwing rubbish away. It illegally, is, yeah. though, Isn't it? Fly. Tip. Jason. Yes? If I said to you, I'm going to go and fill my car up with gas. I would say that's a bit silly, Greg, because gas would evaporate and wouldn't sit in your petrol tank. Well, it would probably explode, wouldn't it? Because gas isn't a liquid. However, that's where the confusion comes with us here in Great Britain, and we call it petrol, and you in the States call it gas. Gas, however, is short for gasoline, Greg, not referring to a gas. And in actual fact, why don't we call ours pet? I don't know. But in actual fact, Greg, our American friends are correct in using that term. Term. Team. 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 Because petrol, which is short for petroleum, Petroleum. Petroleum. <laughs> Petroleum so. is actually the unprocessed crude oil or crude or shale oil. And that is not what we put in cars. What we put in cars is a petroleum byproduct which is which is named gasoline. Reading that off the top of your head again, are you? Yes, Jason? I am my encyclopedic knowledge. So we put gasoline in our cars, but we don't call it gas because we're wrong. But we're not wrong, are we? Well, it's we petroleum, are. like you just said. No, because petroleum isn't what you put in cars. Petroleum the is the unprocessed. It's the same sort of thing, isn't it? Americans, you're right. We're wrong. Pronunciation, Greg. 
Oh god! We... Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to school with Jason as no, your head teacher. I'm not talking about teaching people to pronounce words. I'm talking about the difference in pronunciation some words have in English and in American. For instance, niche. Most Americans now pronounce that niche. I've noticed on the internet. I don't know why. I think it's just a tomato tomato thing. Right. Here's one for you. Mm. Aluminium is pronounced aluminum. It's aluminum, Jason. It's aluminum. And I actually do know why, Greg. Tell me why, Jason. Uh, this comes from right back when Sir Humphrey uh, discovered aluminum. Sir Humphrey Davy discovered the element aluminum. Aluminium. 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 He aluminium. wasn't sure how to spell or pronounce the word he was choosing for his element. Mm. So he did originally release it as aluminum, then changed to aluminium. It's aluminum. Therefore, <laughs> that is why uh, there is some confusion about the pronunciation of it. Neither of us are wrong, because at one point it was called aluminum. It's aluminium. But it was changed to aluminium, which is what we say in this country, which is actually harder to say, isn't it, Greg? Aluminium. He's harder to say than aluminum. Aluminum. Yeah, but you sound like a right loser when you say it. Aluminum. Aluminum. And, whilst we're talking of pronunciation, our American friends pronounce the letter Z as Z. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, K, L, M, B, K, L, M, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Yeah, it doesn't work, doesn't it, with Z, that song, the alphabet song. Does it work with Z? Yeah, because it rhymes with the next bit. A, B, C, D, U, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my alphabet. Won't you sing along with me? Oh, I never did that last bit. Oh, Z doesn't rhyme with me, does it? Well, I didn't... Perhaps that's why it was changed to Z in America, just for the alphabet song. But I didn't know that last bit existed. It does. Well, it doesn't, does it? Um, so that confuses us in this country, doesn't it? And while we're talking about Zs and Zs, we spell lots of words with an S that our American friends spell with a Z or a Z. Go on, like, recognise. Yeah. Well, we spell it R E C O G N I S E, and our American friends spell it R E C G O N I Z E. I didn't realise it was coming in for a headache today. So that, like, this is like my school. That is pronunciation. Greg, if I were to say to you the word broil, what would you think it meant or related to? Boil. No, broil. Isn't that a, having like um, a, um, a, a fight? How do you do? No. Broil is a cooking term oh, that's, that's used in America. That's boil, in it? It is most similar to our word, boil. Our word? Our word, boil. So I've always assumed that it was boiling. Oh, brawl. Broil. I was broil. thinking of yeah, Broil. B-R-O-I-L. Right. It's your pronunciation. You're not, you're not very posh like me. Um, broiling is not, in fact, boiling, Greg. Are you still with me? Just go with it, Jason. I don't need to be with it. Broiling is more... A cross between what we call grilling and baking, but then grilling is something different in America, isn't it? When we say grilling, we mean putting something on the grill pan and putting it underneath the heat source. That's grilling to us. Grilling in America is more barbecue, isn't it? That's a grill. Broiling is a cross between our grilling and baking in that it goes in the oven to be cooked. Did you wake up this morning feeling intelligent? No, I was just confused by all of these things, Greg. Okay. And I wanted to clear them up for myself and our viewers. Okay. So, broiling is something that happens in the oven. A bit like baking for us, possibly with grilling. It, anyway, it's something that's cooked with direct heat in the oven. Alright? Glad we cleared that up. Last one, Greg, on our five things Americans do that confuse us Brits. Are you ready for this? Go for it. Fahrenheit. Right. Versus... Tem temperature. Yeah. yeah. We don't use Fahrenheit, do we? We use Celsius. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, we do. No, I'm not sure about that. It's part of the metric system that was adopted in this country. Um, so, what's the boiling point in Fahrenheit then, Greg, if uh, we use Fahrenheit? That's 100. No, it's not. It is? It's 100 degrees Celsius. It's 100 point. degrees Celsius. It isn't, Greg. Um actually boiling point in Fahrenheit is on here somewhere but it's not 100 Greg 
You know I'm right, don't you? You're not. It's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so close. <laughs> so close. What's freezing point then, Greg, if we <coughs> use Fahrenheit? Zero. That's degrees Celsius, Greg. Point one. Zero. I'm finish it. <laughs> point one five. It's actually 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, go with this then. So when we do the weather, yeah. what do you say it's today? Say it's for instance, today it's... Well, at the moment it's about 14 degrees Celsius. Right, yeah, you see what I do is the other one. So when I go abroad, I say, oh, God, it was in its, it like its mid-80s. Yeah, well, we tend to do that abroad because I think Fahrenheit is used in Europe as well. But here in the UK, if you look on the BBC weather app, for example, it's in Celsius, Greg. Yeah, but I just double that and add 30. That's not right, though, is it? But you get to the Fahrenheit, <laughs> then. Yeah, I know what I think That's what you do. So I, that's what you do. You double it and then add about 30. OK, that's Greg's scientific formula. It's true. For... Working out the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So when they say, oh, it's 20, oh, it's, too, so hot, it's 20 degrees, that's so, so double it, uh, 40, add 30, that's obviously 70, 70 degrees. Right? That's very, very hot though, isn't it? That no, looks... it's not at all, is it? Yeah, that's, I, I think I've made you surprised today. No, anyway, Fahrenheit was proposed in 1724, Greg. And Celsius was proposed in 1744, so Fahrenheit was the first scale used to measure temperature. Uh, Celsius came along later. You're with me. Do you remember that game, the WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge? I don't think that I will ever truly understand Fahrenheit, as I've always measured things in Celsius. Greg, however, seems to have a much better grasp of Fahrenheit than I do. It was just a really good game, wasn't it? You know, you could you could be Macho Man or Hogan. Riddle me this, Greg. Do you remember last week's riddle? No. Nope. It was called Gwendolyn's Granny. I was too busy throwing up from squid. Oh yeah, remember. Gwendolyn tells her friends that her grandmother is only one year older than her mother. How can this be? Do you know the answer, Greg? No. Nope. Well, lots of our viewers did know the answer. The answer is, Gwendolyn is talking about her grandmother on her father's side who is only one year older than her mother. She's got two grandmothers, you see. Not just her mother's mother. It was her father's mother that she was talking about. There you go. Riddle. I've got one this week, Jason. What? Not this book business. You ready for this week's riddle? Yes, Greg. I've got, you've got to try and work this one out, OK? Here we go. A doctor and a bus driver are both in love with the same woman. An attractive girl named Sarah. The bus driver had to go on a long bus trip that would last a week. Before he left, he gave Sarah seven apples. Why? Would you like it again? I'll do it a bit quicker this time. A doctor and a bus driver are both in love with the same woman, an attractive girl named Sarah. The bus driver had to go on a long bus trip that would last a week. Before he left, he gave Sarah seven apples. Why? That is the riddle for this week. You just if stumped, you know the you? answer... Are you stumped, aren't you? No. It's only because I've showed you the answer. Just if pretend. you know the answer, please leave it in the comments below and we'll let you know next week on Tea and Toast Extra the correct answer. I'll tell you what, we're very informative today. We are. Do you know why? <laughs> why? Because we've got some facts for you. Facts for you. Greg, what's your fact? My fact, Jason, is... Did you know... No. Well, I haven't told you yet. Oh. Right. Did you know that you could fit 109 Earths side by side to match the diameter of the sun? Well, that, quite frankly, is astounding, Greg. I mean, even you're a little bit shocked at that, aren't you? Yeah. Did you wig? Did you, wig? Did you figure that out on your own? I really did. <laughs> I really did. 109 Earths to match the size of the sun. How did you calculate that? Oh, went up there. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Anyway, uh, my fact, Greg. Before Pixar settled on the name Toy Story for the famous film. Oh, an interesting one from Jason this week. Other names. Tune they, in. Other names they suggested included Made in Taiwan, Moving Buddies, and Toys in the Hood. I like that one. Toys in the Hood. No, Toy Story is brilliant, isn't it? Well, obviously because. Yeah, but it tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Like one of the most successful animated films ever, isn't it? They're doing four, aren't they? Are they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you not know that? No. Well, I told you in a couple of weeks ago in one I of the just, episodes. I don't listen to you. 
that. Did you know they're doing Toy Story 4? Are they, Michael? That's interesting. Oh, so you listen to me but not Craig? Yes. That <laughs> was Facts For You. That's it for Teen Toast Extra this week, Greg. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, that's all we've got time for. So we will see you again on Friday with the Weekly Scoop. Or Weekly Scoop. Weekly Scoop.